Uh, just a moment here. Uh, uh, this we're in Bill Joanne's house, and uh, this is Sunday evening, the fourth of uh, November, nineteen eighty-four, and we're talking about various items of the pertaining to the plane crash, and they want to correct some of the uh, things that are um, not quite correct in the first chapter, which is from this valley. Joanne wants to talk. We, here, present is Bill, uh, his wife Joanne, Joanne, and Beth. And Cleo and Jay. All right, John. Joanne. Okay, it was it was either December of '56 or the very beginning of January '57. And Bill and I had come up. It was his last leave while in the service, and we had come up this way and visited my parents at Christmas time. And it was between New Year's and Christmas, or right at New Year's, that we got down to Bountiful. And it seemed like it was a Sunday or a Saturday night that we were there. It was a weekend. I remember that. Right. And Dee came <coughs> over. It was night time. And Dee came over, and in his cute way, he just said, uh, hey, I know how to fly a plane, or something to that effect. And it drove, uh, got our curiosity really high, and Bill says, what do you mean? He says, I do, I have a, a pilot's license. And Bill says, how did you manage that? And he says, well, every time that I told Lou I wanted to, and she kept telling me she didn't want me to do that. He says, and I still did it. He says, every day I'd go and say, well, I think I'll go out and fly a plane today. You remember him saying that now? And he was really, and she thought he was joking, see, and he really was learning to fly, and he got his license. Okay, and so he, <coughs> then they talked to Bill a little bit about when he got released February the 19th, which was just a month and a half later from the time that we were there, about him coming to Boise, to, or to uh, Bountiful, to work, you know, and, and he threw out an offer at Bill at that time, and he says, and then, you know, we talked some more, and then he says, and hey, I'll take you for a ride sometime on the plane. You know, then's when your father said, D, I've had a dream about that plane. And he was real serious. What, what was this approximate time? This was either uh, like around the 1st of January, New Year's. What year? 1957. 57. Or it was the very tail end. It was between Christmas and New Year's of oh, December 56. Okay, so January, February, March, April. So, uh, so uh, at, that's uh, close to four months then. Before the March. Mm-hmm. And the Daddy, last of March. Daddy didn't indicate when he had that dream, but I got the feeling it wasn't too far from the time he told us. It was in the general area of time. It was mm-hmm. new to him, and he w- he was very, um, um, what do you call it? He Adamant. Could de- well, he could destroy. He could describe it in detail. Oh, I see. And he, uh, de- so then he says, "Well, what did you dream, or something to that effect?" D said. Yeah, D right. was there. D right. was sitting at the table with us. He right. came. He came across the road. You know how their houses sit. Right. Came around the curve there and mm-hmm. came over to where they had that new home, Mom and Dad Packard. Yes. And he was sitting at the table with us. And if I remember correctly, I think Cleo was there. Yes, I heard and the whole Barbara thing. was there. Beth is there, And too. I think uh, Benny was there, and I think Bernie was there. Mm-hmm. I'm sure those three were there. Because I remember Benny's blonde hair. I remember that distinctly. And I remember Barbara there. I remember Barbara that. and I was there alone. And, and I, I that was a, a hard night for me because... Mm. Um, my my two little babies were fussing. We traveled so much. We were fussing. And Mom Packard had said, now, if that was Ron's kids, you know, and that was the wrong thing to say to me. <laughs> you know, and, and I it I was suffering with that, trying to still be decent, but inside I was suffering a little. And then Daddy spoke up, see, and I always respected him a lot because I loved him and because of, he taught me in Sunday school, and I just learned to love and respect for him. I, I just had it. And when he started to speak, you could tell he had something real deep inside that was bothering him. Mm-hmm. And so he said, I had, I had a dream about that plane, D. And D says, well, what did you dream? And he said, I dreamt that you crashed and that your face, the one side of your face was cut bad like a meat cleaver had been taken to it. And he says, what else did you see? And he says, that's all I saw. I just saw that. And he says, I think you should be careful about the plane. Maybe Cautious. forget it. And that's what made <coughs> Dean, it, it angered him a little. He says, Dad, that's foolish. Something to that effect. I don't remember the exact remarks of these, but I remember what Dad Packard said. The reason I do is because I came from a home where it was a real spiritual experience there, and and I have a, a little brother that was kind of special to our family, and when he was three years old, he came into the house one day, and he, he was bawling. I was home then. Bill was overseas. See, and this has happened before, this dream of death. He came into the house, and he was just bawling like everything, and he said, Grandma's dying. 
And my mother immediately thought it was her mother because m Grandma Nielsen had a bad heart. And we always expected trouble with her. And he, she kept saying, is it Grandma next door? This is the place. And he says, no, the other one. Well, my Grandma Jones is a healthy person. That was 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I took mm -hmm. note of the time because it bothered me. That so she what was did so you mean with the other one? My dad's mother. Grandma Jones. Okay. And, you know, we just kept saying, Michael, there, it's not true. He cried all afternoon, and he kept telling us that Grandma was dying, and we kept saying, it's not so, Michael. You just got yourself worked up, because he was just three years old. At 5 o'clock, we got a long-distance telephone call from Price, Utah, and my dad's brother said, if, da if Pat wants to see Mother alive, he better get down here for Pat. <coughs> and so from that point on, see, boy... I paid attention to things like that because I got there's, the feeling that little children were close to the spirit. Let me, okay, let's, let's, let's and so D, uh, he wasn't disrespectful in his uh, remark back to Dad, but you could tell he was upset, and he didn't want to hear that. And he says, Dad, that just won't happen. And he was just kind of dismissed. But you know, when they went, when that plane crash happened, boy, and I went to the hospital that night and was there waiting when that ambulance came in from Park Valley and I saw Dee, I knew that Daddy was right because his whole right side of his face was just cut. He had cuts all <clears throat> over. Okay. And his nose, he kept lifting his nose up off his face like that. And just, you know, and I thought that dream was right because the other side of the face wasn't touched let's, at all. Let's go back. Let's go back to to the dream uh, again. And you're saying that Dad Dad dreamed that uh, that he crashed that plane, and uh, and that uh, it uh, it damaged uh, uh, Dee's, the left side of his face badly. I don't remember what side Daddy said. Uh, Bill maybe remembers, but I just I okay. just remember Daddy saying that one side of his face when, was... When, I first, we were when I first came there, <clears throat> Cleo came jabbering to me like she sometimes does, and she said that uh, she was talking... Uh, I, I picked up that that Dad had had a dream. I also picked up that in the dream that Dee got a, a nasty L cut shaped... Uh, shape on cut head. on his left side of his cheek. All right, now... If we're to believe that <clears throat> the, all that Dad saw is that Dee crashed in that plane, you tell me then why Dad was so willing to go up several times prior to the flight, prior to the, the trip, with Dee in that plane and fly all around the valley. And Dee told me, he said, <clears throat> Dad was perfectly at ease, no problem, but when it came time... To trip. take the trip, it was go. altogether different. He did not want to go. And know. so there was something else, and that's what I'm, just, I'm I, reaching for. I don't think it was something conscious. I don't, I don't think either. Dad knew that he was consciously what he was fighting against. And he should he not was go. against it, just like, no, just no, like no, uh, there, Carvel there, and... There may have been something no, mama, about a trip. No, mama, told, mama told me mm. when I got out of the Navy uh, some of the experiences she had up here to make her want to to move. And she said, um, she says, I vowed that I would never step foot in Idaho again. I, I'll never step foot in Idaho again. And, uh, well, and, uh, uh, so she, um, and that was discussed a little bit prior to the trip. I am, um, I'm uh, wondering, uh, Jay, uh, if she maybe, went, she was, she decided to go. If maybe Dad, um, <clears throat> he was a peacemaker. We have to all agree to that, that he was a peacemaker. And maybe he realized that, re maybe he knew. Maybe he knew when that crash was going to happen, but didn't reveal it because he was afraid of static and, and trouble. I don't know, because I didn't know that he'd gone up in the plane. I, didn't I, know that he, I, I don't think nothing. the Lord gives quite that much knowledge. Now, when no, 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 no. Diane Davis was in the car wreck that Wendell and, I mean, that Larry and Ellen D were in, that day, her mother told us, she got up, she says, I want to go visit all my relatives today. And she did. She went and visited her mother, her grandmother, I mean, and her aunts and uncles. She'd never done that before. And... Yeah. Uh, Okay, well, wait. Repeat that last statement for me, please. Okay. You don't believe that you don't believe that Dad knew why he, he was against going on them going on that flight. Okay. But he was. He was. Right. Uh, you don't think that uh, adamantly, what? adamantly against it. All right. Well, here's the thing. It had to be. It had to tie in with with the dream 
uh, uh, yes. either that or the statement was false to me that came uh, uh, later that, that his first words after coming to, which was not one week, not two weeks, not three weeks, maybe not even four weeks uh, after he the plane crash. It was it was a month or so before he he uh, came to and his months. first two months. Okay, it was that makes it conscious two months. All right, that gives that gives time for emotion to settle down. And whoever got the word to me that his first words was was well next time you'll listen to me. And now, and now, and now, and either either a false or I was, I was, I was I told the truth. Too. See, you yeah. didn't hear that either, did you? No, that's the way it's me. I think we said that, and somebody has carried it on to to Jay different than it was, because when Dad came to, he didn't know Mama died. He, he didn't, didn't know, know he no. couldn't remember that they went to the temple the day before. He couldn't remember a they, lot of things. Dad and Mom went to the temple before the, the day before the crash. Yeah. He didn't remember a lot of things that happened. He, he, it wasn't in his mind. He so wouldn't I, believe that she was dead. No. He kept saying things like, got after you're it. telling me that yeah. he's dead, but she'll come around. That's I know right. how she is. She, his she mind that wasn't lot. that sharp. That he would go it. back and no, realize see, that he had cautioned them. At this time, it was, it was, uh, it was Force Packard talking. Before, uh, uh, well, I personally feel that he received a divine uh, message. Well, I do that too, no one paid attention to it. Like that. That. Too, However, too. the story the story says that Cleo believed it and was angry with her brothers because they were making fun of it. And, you know, and so it was the, it's the dream that, that we're talking about. Cleo believed it. I and, never and it I believe when it. I got to Utah after the plane crash, I'd heard about it, and, and I I cannot for the for the life of me remember how I got there. I came either with uh, Von Floyd and Ron, or I flew, but Flo came behind later. Well, the first place that I came to, I think, was uh, either, I believe, Dee's home. And, well, you uh, came to the some, hospital real soon, I know. Yes, yeah. And, and I believe that Wendell was here to pick up Dee from the hospital, and then the three of us drove out, out there, but in the meantime, I had met Cleo, and Cleo was jabbering, and she was talking about Dad's dream, and that nobody believed it except her, and uh, and and then talking about these L-shaped cut on his face, and that that was in Dad's dream. So, why did she get this? Mm -hmm. well, well, let me tell you something else, too, Jay. Uh, this, this trip was discussed without Lou and I being there. It was not discussed while we were there. And, uh, in fact, I was getting to the point, see, four years Bill and I had been in the Navy, and we lived for each other. I lived for every weekend he came home, and I, I only got to spend either Saturday afternoon and Sunday with him, or just Friday evening, depending on what duty he had. And four years of that, boy, you live for each other. And when we, in just that short time from February the 19th that he got released, and we drove to Bountiful, and the time that accident happened, we were just drifting through apart. I never saw him. His kids never saw him. He was over at Mom's all the time or out working with the guy. And and this one particular night, I had waited up for supper. I had put the kids to bed, and it was getting very, very late, and I'm still waiting there by myself, pregnant with Byron, and I'm wondering, what is going on? We uh, Four years, we've been so close, and now we're not. And I couldn't figure it out. And he came home that night. If I remember correctly, it seems like it was a Wednesday night that he came home, and uh, I said, where have you been, honey? He said, I've been over to Mom and Dad's. I said, what you been doing? He said, well, I'm going on a plane trip with him. And I think it was Saturday. Mm -hmm. Saturday and I got mad. Time. It's one of the worst. Mad. I, I was mad. I so, I think about now, I think how awful that would have been if he died, and I was so mad. And I was so mad, and I said, Bill, you're not going on that plane. I was instantly infuriated for two reasons. One, that I hadn't been consulted in, and second, I don't know why I didn't want him to go on the plane, but I didn't want him to go. You I you just didn't want him to. No. And we argued that night. Yeah. In the dark, our little kids were in the bedroom sleeping, and I just kept saying, Bill, you're not going. But you didn't know why. I didn't know why. Okay, that's I just what didn't I'm want saying. him to. That's I had I'm a feeling saying. on me that was just like a rock. But you just crushing me, and I kept saying, you're not going, Bill. And finally, late, late, like midnight, he said, I am going, and we will not discuss this no more. And he got up from the table and went to bed. Okay. Was this the night before the, the, no, the takeoff? No, this was in, on Wednesday. And so then on Thursday, uh, I kept, oh, I'm so mad. I'm so mad. And he got up early in the morning, and he went off to work again before our kids woke up, and they were getting distraught. Where's Daddy? 
eye disease at work. And I kept thinking about that plane. He's not going to go on that plane if I got anything to say. That I don't know why. I just didn't want him to go. Had he already... Tell about Raymond. Well, had, wait. Wait a minute. Had he already gone with Dee on other flights? No. No. This is his first trip with Dee. Well, I've been up in the airplane. Well, flying around the city. No. Okay. All right. But he'd never right. gone on the trip, and so... Okay. Okay. Friday. No. no. Friday is, comes. This, is, is this about your son? Now wait, okay. you're ahead of the story. And Friday comes... Honey, I'd gone to Los Angeles with Dee. No, Did not I? then. That was later. That was after, oh, yeah. Okay. We'd only been there only a month. Just about five oh, weeks okay. was off, mm-hmm. if you'll remember. Okay, you're and right. Friday morning, we woke up and it was raining. Just a little bit, okay? And Bill was gone early, like you had been doing, making a habit of since we got there. And he was, we had just been in that ward just that little while, but they had, the Elders Quorum had given Bill the responsibility of being responsible for the games at the Elders Quorum party that was to be held that night. <coughs> okay, and I wanted really bad to make a good impression what, on the ward. What was this Friday night in relation to departure? The night Next before. Day. All right, all right. Mm-hmm. And, and so uh, Bill comes squeezing in there just the last, minute before we supposed to be to the meeting and, and it started to rain. And I had hung clothes out on the line that day. And as we got in the car, we were facing the, the clotheslines. You could see the clotheslines. And I saw all those clothes and it was kind of raining again. And I thought, oh, God. I thought these things. I didn't tell it to him. I thought him. As he was backing out, I felt like saying, Bill, stop and let me get those clothes in. And then I thought, no, I hope it rains bad. Then they won't go. Because see, Thursday I was troubled about this thing. Friday I was troubled about it. Worse. I just, it was just a dark cloud over me, and I'm not a, dis, a despondent person. No. I'm a very happy person. And I remember as we backed out of that driveway, I said, I hope it rains like the devil. And I didn't even bother to get the clothes in. We went to that party, and we came home, and it was raining cats and dogs. And I was glad, because I figured that would hold them off. They wouldn't go. And we got it. He, he, I said to him as we called the bed, I said, Bill, you surely won't go with the weather like this, and he said, because he see, he was still upset with me, because he didn't want me to go, and it was the worst time in our life, it really was, mm-hmm. and uh, it was the worst argument we'd ever had, too, mm-hmm. yes, uh, made me mad, because he says, well, we'll see what the weather report is in the morning, but see, you didn't know what was driving I you against, know. I still know what was driving him to go, I'm saying the know. same thing with Junior McKay, you remember? It's for you, honey. The same thing with Junior McKay. You remember, Bill, when his family went to, to Swan Falls? Oh, yes. Okay, yes. you remember. The father was a good, good man. He told them that day, do not go. This is Sunday. They said, look, Dad, we're just you can just go for a, beauty, a, a nice drive. And he says, no, you do not go. And finally, at the last, just like Dad Packard, he gave in and says, well... The rest of you are going, okay, I'll go too. And five of them were killed. No. Okay, right. I think that's the way it was with Dad. That's the way I understood it. Dad was against it, but he didn't know why, but at the last minute he says, well, if, Mama, if you're going, that's what happened. Then I'll go sure. Jay, that's Jay, more, more reasonable. We, we if you're going, I'll go with you. Heard that. Your first is a plane accident, heard. Well, I heard over the radio first. I said, Barbara, come here quick. Listen to this carefully. I said, oh, you mentioned D.R. Packard. And yes. Uh, Barbara Mom? told me about that one. Mom, but anyway, Dad, finishing, and Bill. Finishing a story where Joanne left off out there. At home, Raymond and Beverly were sitting around the table and Joanne was feeding them. We crashed right at 8 o'clock. Dee's watch was, was, smashed at eight? was smashed right at 8 o'clock. Now, we heard what the time did you take off? Mm-hmm. About uh, six thirty. Mm-hmm. That's what I was going to say. Six thirty. Six thirty. That is uh, that is uh, an hour and a half. Uh, is that an hour and a half of uh, of flight time? Mm-hmm. An hour and a half of flight time. Uh, it's not that far from Bountiful uh, Airport to. Uh, that's where you left from, isn't it? Yeah. To uh, Park Valley. Park Valley. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. You just crossed the lake. An hour and a half. To it might have been six. It was it was six something. And that's the time that the and we left came. <clears throat> but anyway, anyway, uh, packets. And then right at eight o'clock, Joanne said, um, uh, or, or Raymond said, "Where's Daddy?" And uh, and Joanne says, "Well, Daddy has gone on a trip." 
on the airplane. And then Raymond said, Mama, Daddy, airplane hurt. Daddy, airplane hurt. And Mama says, No. Daddy, airplane not hurt. Daddy, airplane hurt. He kept saying that to her. Oh, that was. Let me tell you what Barbara said. I interviewed her the other day. She said that they, it was hush hush all that week prior to flight, and the tension was high in the family and got worse as the days progressed. And she didn't know anything about a dream. And this is this is uh, perhaps three months after the dream. Didn't know anything about it until along in the middle of the uh, of the week. And the tension got so so severe that I, I she heard that. Uh, little short arguments between dad and mom, not any long conversations, little short arg- uh, 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 arguments, and she heard the dream, something about the dream. Then she knew that it was a dr- there was a dream involved, and because of the the severity of the tension, she and the other two teenagers, Benny and uh, Bernie talked about it, and he said something needs to be done. Bob wasn't there. Yeah, I was there, too. Definitely I was there. She didn't mention Bob. No, I'll take it back. Bob was on on his mission. He never come on. All right. Okay, I'll take it back. Okay. Now. When the Bob and I was home. Okay. So, then, Barbara said that there was a discussion amongst them as to what to do about it, and it was determined that one of them would talk to uh, uh, Mom and get her to apologize. And uh, uh, Barbara wasn't certain which one it was, Bernie or Barbara or, or uh, uh, Ben, and, but she thought that it was Ben. Okay. Well, anyway, she says she thinks it was Ben. Ben talked to Mom, and Mom got upset at first, but then she listened. And uh, Ben apparently asked her to uh, to consider apologizing to Dad. And uh, Mom said, "Well, all right, I'll apologize, but I won't mean it." Because I heard what she now, said. Now, <clears throat> Barbara told me that the that uh, there was that up uh, that point in the week, and after they had decided to have somebody talk to Mom and coax her into apologizing, that uh, that it seemed to them that that. It transpired because the mood changed completely and said the next morning uh, Dad was all happy and normal and was going to go to work uh, to Packard Lumber and just before leaving uh, for the door he uh, he reached over to kiss Mom and Mom turned, pulled away. But Dad had kissed her on either the mouth or the cheek and, and Barbara wasn't certain which but Mom wiped it off. And uh, and uh, Barbara said she was she was that that hurt her Barbara and said she had, she talked to herself right then and said I will never do things like that to my husband when I get married mm-hmm. and uh, I will try to live better than that. Well, anyway, the week then progressed toward Friday and as it did so. Uh, uh, Friday, I guess, was the departure time? Friday morning? Saturday. Saturday, Saturday morning. morning. Okay. It's 5 o'clock. You're supposed to get okay. up at 5 o'clock. Okay. And, and, and uh, happiness increased, and everything seemed to be fine with both. And it was obvious that the decision was Dad was going to go, too. And uh, Mom had, had uh, leveled her bullet against Dad that, uh, that if he wasn't going to go, she wasn't going to go. And apparently they had already had discussion indicating that it was something that must be taken care of, and, uh, uh... No, they, it wasn't, it wasn't quite that way, Jay. Uh, they what had wasn't already... That way? What wasn't it that wasn't, way? Uh, it wasn't, it wasn't that mandatory? Mom had decided to not, maybe not going. Mom never did decide not to go. She, uh, she was going, well, she was going, and they were coming up, they had no, already well, wait contacted... Wait a minute, wait a minute, you're in Idaho, and, uh, Barbara is there in the home with that uh, mom. No, I Barbara there too. said I that, there that too. mom used that, really not meaning it, she told me that, really not meaning it, but used it as an arm twister, a weapon against dad, well, if you're not going, I'm not going. No, it was just the opposite. Dad just finally says, if you're going, then I'm going. Because Mom never gave up, I didn't think. That's right. Yeah, Mom right. never gave no, up the No, Barbara idea has going. also stated that, that. That Mom did not give up and she didn't intend to this time. 
But she, she said did. that but to she Pete's used dad. It. She used mm -hmm. it as a different tactic, a oh, different you maneuver. Your mom doing that. <laughs> uh, uh, well, it worked. It worked. Yeah. Dad was happy, and he was happy that Mom apologized, Barbara says. Very happy. Uh -huh. Okay, and Charlie that caused Dad to change his position and decide <laughs> to go. But, but prior to that, Mom uses a weapon to kind of arm twist Dad, that if you're not, if you're not going, I'm not going. I, I okay. have to tell you now, here too, Jay, that uh, I learned later, and I don't remember now if Lou told me this herself or if Dee told it to me later. I don't remember. Seemed like Lou told me. But she had the same feeling I did. She did not want them to go, and she couldn't explain why. And even that morning, when Dee left, she says, Dee, you shouldn't be gone. Mm -hmm. I, heard, that I remember that. I heard she said you heard it told that. shaking her finger. Yes, I, I remember she shook the finger to Dad. Said, uh, shaking her finger. I yes. Well, but, but was there a logical involved. reason? And no. I, I want to look at it from Dee's so. point. Nothing logical. And, and from Mom's point, was there any logical reason for not going? Yeah, so why should the yes, light not sprinkle? Yes, there was. No, it was not a light sprinkle. Let me tell yeah, you, it rained rain. all rained. It poured and so, down. And so it Dee, ran rivers down that. So you know, Dee and we I took time that morning. It rained all night. And when we got up at 5 o'clock, the alarm went off, and I thought, won't go. So, I thought that, so and I Dee, said it to Dee decided story. right there, when I was right there in this home, to call the, um, Air Air the aeronautics control to find out the what weather. the weather's like. Uh -huh. And this was the answer. If you stay under 10,000 feet, you'll be okay. Uh -huh. And so we flew at 60, we flew at around 6,500 feet, and so on, and... Okay, you see now, of course, stories aren't quite together. Dee told me just the other day in an interview that, uh, that icing conditions were at 6,500. Uh, 6, Therefore, I stayed just above that. Well, see, that's, sure. what I, that's what I'm saying. I think Bill's confused mm -hmm. there because, yes, Daddy, you, you, when I remember you called the airport yourself from our home because I wasn't satisfied. I kept saying, Bill, you surely wouldn't be oh, okay. Okay. Right. You had to be above 10,000. Above 10,000. That's, this is what threw me. I thought that was it. I looked at that and I looked at it twice. If he you said as long as you stay above 10,000? Above 10,000 feet because you won't ice up because you'll be above the fog. That was what it was. Mm -hmm. And we dropped down into the fog because of the weight of the wings. I saw this below the tone. That didn't make All right, now now you're beginning to tie in with what he I said. Remember he said that, that uh, if above I had my banana. 500, it, says, uh, it said above 6,500 right, feet. You'll be safe. Okay, that's, what, that's why Dee said icing conditions was at 6,500, and so I stayed above that to be sure. Yeah. And then, so the, so the air controller then, air, contro air controller's position was, you're, 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 you're all right as long as you stay above 10,000. Okay, so the oh, record then has to be changed. Above 6,500. They told it, you that instead of 10? Where did above the figure 10 come in? That was a mistake. All right. It was above 65. I, I remember it. And so we flew at 10,000 to be safe. That's where you started? We, no. Yeah. No, we got right up to 10,000. We flew at 10,000 feet. We were way above the 65. All right. What brought you to be 10 down? No. Are you saying icing conditions were up at 10? Well, no. Yes. Yes. When they we got thought we'd be safe at 10,000. We got around those mountains. And then all at once, the, new, the plane started going this down. Going. And we noticed the wings. We noticed the what? wings were iced, got, iced up. We didn't know how to get rid of it. And uh, Out in clear it, weather, it, now let me tell you something. He down. said it was clear weather where you came from, and he said, I could see through the pass ahead of me, but there was a fog bank, clouds, white stuff, not gray, because I asked him, white stuff coming from the left, that was from the west, the left yeah. of the plane, and he said, I couldn't tell how far over there the land was because of the fog bank, and it was moving over toward the pass. But I figured I could get through first. But, but uh, as I moved on in there, the fog mm -hmm. seemed to raise up to us mm -hmm. and started mm -hmm. icing conditions. Mm -hmm. Now, we were icing at 10,000. That's what, that's what upset us because we were told 65. We'd be okay, and we iced at ten thousand and took us down. Okay, and Dee told me that uh, that 
He said, if I had had my bonanza, I could have, yeah. I could have gone on up yeah. and, and, and got over it Not and beat it. Yeah. Right. But he said, this was the weakest plane I've ever o yeah. I had ever it owned. Was. It was. Very weak airplane. And, uh, 110 miles an hour. I couldn't get away from it. 110 miles an hour, which is about I want to ask feet. you some pertinent questions here. In your mind, was there a dream? Oh, yeah. It was disgusting. Before the flight. <coughs> All right. <coughs> when you first got into trouble and saw that you were icing, you saw it and brought it to Dee's attention, I believe, or, or vice versa. You saw that you were icing. Well, we, we noticed that the wings were heavy with ice. We both looked at them. Dee brought it to my attention. All right. And, but we continued to fly. Were you in any fog at that and time? Then, then were you in any fog at that time? A little bit. Okay. But then all at once, we couldn't see a thing. I mean, well, that's when you dropped, dropped in, it's gone down. And we couldn't see one thing. And we had the kind of plane that didn't have the instruments to tell which direction you were going. And then all at once, the plane started shaking, just like it says here. Uh, it started shaking, vibrating. <coughs> and I, I looked at the speedometer, and I says, D, we're doing 170. And I knew that the top speed of the plane was 110, because it was... It was a small plane. It was 110. And just then, we saw the ground. Just we then, or you? I think both of us. It was happened so fast. He didn't. It happened he so didn't. fast. You said, that, you said in your first report that you saw the ground. And I and didn't clear back on the stick. I asked, D, I asked D if you helped him uh, pull her out of the dive. And he didn't think so, but he wasn't sure. He thought it was him. Well, I don't know. All right. The first one, I don't know. The second one, your, yes. your, your report, you stated that <clears throat> you were concerned about the tail hitting. <laughs> and and, uh, uh, and then you saw, in. just a moment, you, you saw, you saw uh, the sagebrush sh shake from the wind of the plane. You were that close to the ground. Shake, shake, the sagebrush right. shake from the wind of the plane. Call. All right, and ba let's back up. Let's back up. Let's back up to when you first saw... You were in trouble. That is icing conditions. You saw you were getting it. Mm -hmm. And you were supposedly up around 10,000 feet. Yeah. And, you, and you were just and touching the fog here and there, all right? Yeah. Because Probably. you're out in clear air. I but it dropped us down up. into it fast. Jay. I okay. remember we were right. so fast that we couldn't see. Okay. You, you, tell, you tell me that you were aware of a dream. That didn't even enter my mind. Why? Just wouldn't. Clear we're weather was be about it. Clear weather was behind that. you. You came out of clear weather. I mean, the reader of the record is going to say, "Why the devil didn't they turn back where it was safe? Because they why did they go on in all of a sudden? Yeah, we were in it. We couldn't see which direction to go. They were just we already had no idea. in it. You were you were up above it. All and I icing. know, you saw all it. I know, is that they had but we dropped down icing. so fast into the fog that they had no the, time. No. No time. We were down in it immediately. I remember seeing the airplane propeller spinning. That's all I could see. You couldn't even hardly see the wings out there. That's you after you're in, in the, the dense fog. Yeah, the that happened before. very, they very were, fast once we dropped down. They were given a clear weather report. And it didn't yeah, take very they, much to drop down into it. Mm -hmm. and we was in it. And then you, you just it too late. Did you ever see the pass? Never did see it. You never did? Uh -huh. Dee said that it was clear weather just the other day. Told me it was clear weather. He could see. He could see. Uh, uh, the it was clear every place except to his west. And the fog no, bank hey, was coming you, you in. I knew that it, it raised up. Jay, you have and he to said understand. He thought that he could get through the pass first, and and you crashed a hundred feet shy of the ridge. Okay, but Jay, listen. When you're driving a vehicle, and I'm sitting over here as a passenger. You see a lot more than what I see as a passenger. That's why I want to depend uh, more on, on the Bill's the, position. The saw that. Well, what and I, I remember was that they, they filed a flight plan. I'm and over, right. and it, they were given a clear I was eating report. radishes and carrots. That was you had already started all those. And, yeah, and, and was, they were already was. given a clear weather report. And then they got into this fog. And then I understood that D saw an opening up in the clouds to the left. And so he thought, if I go out up there and go up, we'll get out of it. But instead, you. Well, that's what I heard. The following. Remember. 
the, was it the day of the crash or the following day? It, it crashed on a Saturday. Yeah. Uh, when I got there, yeah, was that was it Saturday or Sunday? It was Sunday. Okay, on Sunday, he told me that he thought he could fly up over it, tried yeah. to get up over it. Yeah. Um, <coughs> and so, no, if they were flying at ten. And D thought he could get up over it, that's suggesting that he tried to climb and apparently couldn't. But he, and he said it seemed like the, 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 the fog moved up to them. But D tells me, just the other day, that it was clear out ahead, he could see the path except for the west, the left of the plane. And that, that he was at a point where it was either go forward or go back. It was the same, no better one way than the other. Right. Sixes, in other words. So You're out in the middle of the, of the creek. Yeah, see, we, we didn't know. I, what, was, what, was that ever your thought? Did you ever think of returning? Dee mentioned... Did you ever think of returning yourself? Well, you was, I want, was, uh, was always hoping that you were going another direction. No, no, back, no, no, no. I, I, I need, I need, did you turn I need back? your answer. Did you ever think of, re, of returning back. back home? Yeah. Aborting the flight? Yeah, that's what he The reader wants to know. Why did you go on into a death trap? They maybe we didn't realize it was we a death trap. They were going up out of it. We weren't in a death trap. We didn't know we were in a death trap. Everything was fine. Uh, well, uh, okay. Until we got uh, in the fog. It was just like all at once, phew, you're in black. Now what? They have prayer. In and there's just okay. no... Uh, we were in it. And once you're in it, whether you went that way or this way or that way, which way is back? Do you, don't know. All right. Do, do you that remember? That did not have instruments for that. Do, do you remember seeing the general uh, uh, sky out ahead while you were going when you first saw that you were icing? No. Yeah, I'm sure. You don't they remember that down, because there is a very important time, and the reader's going to want to know when you first thought of you. See, here's what I want to know. See, we didn't realize why the plane was losing power until it was too late. Uh, the wings and, were and, too heavy. Yeah, and 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 D made a comment. He made a comment. He says we're losing power. He made a comment. We're losing power. And and I want you to tell me when that stops turning, please. Please, when that stops and, turning, and, uh, tell me. And 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 losing altitude. And then this drew our attention to the wings. And you could see the bowls of ice. Then then he the noticed the, that we're we're losing power. Losing power. How did he recognize that? Airspeed? Mm. Yeah. Losing airspeed. Well, well and, 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 and the plane started losing uh, altitude and he couldn't altitude. get it up. Oh, okay, all right. He, couldn't hold it. he made the comment, and then I he, can't then, hold the plane up. That's right. And see, no, so, so here it was dropping down. and That was prior to your seeing that it was icing? That was prior yeah. to yeah. seeing the, the reason why it was dropping. Why yes. he couldn't yeah. hold the plane up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then so at that time you had already iced quite a little bit. Mm -hmm. but, okay. And there was no so time to so turn back then, or any other way. The, the plane was already weighted down. I See, could have jumped out. You ought to know if you're then, fighting a plane, I've flown in a plane, and all of a sudden it, it's all clear, and all of a sudden you're in stuff. And you it just happens to fly. Um, <clears throat> I never did have the fear of going into clouds or, or well, fog or anything when you're like in that. Commercial you airlines, in commercial airlines, in commercial airlines, you're, you're, of course not. They've got yeah, every the instrument icers. possible, and they've got the ear, the icers on there. Yeah. Well, then it goes by instrument. Now, there's one yeah. area, one thing here that uh, I felt area. that you ought to beef up right there. Still well, Bill, today. while we're still, still thinking going. right, we've got to land the plane. He didn't we were back in the fog when we put out of the dive. We were back in the fog. Okay, right there. You were back in the fog, fog. indicating that when you were uh, when when you were down close, you weren't in the fog. Just well, we saw the ground. But when we How much the space dive, was there between the fog and the ground? Very little. In fact, you'll find out towards the end here. Could he have turned around then and gone back oh, to no, good okay. weather? You ran right into a mountain. We knew that mountains are right there and. Do you just run over the path? They just had to get up. Mm. No, there was no mm. path. There was an opening in the clouds. Oh, did, Jay, did you go out Jay, back we, to the site after We hunted crash. there. There is no passes. There's a big mountain all the way across there. There is no path. It wasn't a path. No it was an opening in the clouds that Dee was talking about, not a path. There's no pass in that mountain anyway. I mean, it's just one great big mountain across there. And the, it doesn't get down any place. Uh -huh. It was just okay. Okay. There's another area where these yeah. uh, these uh, um, 
these you, messages hurt a little. You've been up there, Jay. You don't sure I have, it. but then uh, we I, climbed I, I through the top remember, of that thing. I don't remember We've every dip or... We've been up there lots of times. Or, uh, and, and like you said, it's just one big little mountain. That I know that there's some areas more uh, that's higher than other areas. I well, think so. Whether there's a pass or not, which would I, the way I envision in my <laughs> mind, it's way to the left uh, looking at the mountain. It's way to the left of where we went hunting all the time. I think what D means by I a pass figure. is just an opening in the clouds that he saw a way to get no, maybe get out. No, he was talking about land. He I was saying it. the mountain was higher over to the right. I he don't says, think he could He says, see I only had so much distance and it wasn't enough to turn around. And, and I didn't dare try it on the left. I remember, it was foggy over there. I remember everything was fine going over about where the Kunstler Ranch was. I remember approaching that area and approaching the mountain. And everything seemed to be fine until we got to that mountain. Until we got over and around that mountain. And then things changed real quick. Real quick. Um, but anyway, there's one area here. We were back in the fog. We didn't know which way we were going, and that's a fact. Well, when, when you're in deep fog, that's true. You just you do. Can't. No. For some reason, the Lord directed us to a small plateau to do the stalling. Now... Before we did that, Dee and I had done a lot of talking. Um, you didn't have time for much talking. We did. We uh, uh, Dee says, Bill, um, the uh, the ground is very close to the fog. There's not much distance there. I'm going to bring it down slow. Now we could have rammed right into a mountain. We didn't know. I'm going to bring it down slow. The first one that sees the ground, pull back on their stick. I had one, and he had one. Pull back on your stick as soon as you see it. See, that's contrary to his memory now. <clears throat> he didn't, he didn't indicate oh, that you participated Bill? in the flight, this the actual one, flying, because I specifically asked him. I wanted to know, were you helping? This second one I did. The second time down through the The second down through the fog. Bill has told me. And so, and so, I get, so, so we did. We yanked it back. And I remember the plane coming up in this position, and I remember it really vibrating. Just vibrating like that, because D acted like he wanted to gain more altitude before he... And the last thing I remembered was him taking that throttle and pushing it in. That was Did he it. turn off keys? No, I, I just remember pushing the throttle in. D the plane was up like this, just shaking. To, to eliminate possibility and he didn't of fire. want to land on his tail. Well, the tail on the tail, there on the tail, would have been the ideal... Condition. Well, but what happened is the plane like. went like this, and like too this, far, and then it went too far. Yes, too far forward. That's what broke the back. in a little bit. Instead of pancaking, it went like this, and that's what done all the damage, throwing mom and dad and everybody forward. D into the your back. Now let me tell you, ask you what would have happened had you sat on the tail when you came down to the ground? It could have caused a fire. On that one. Not with the key off. They said he told her he, that he uh, turned the key off mm -hmm. to eliminate fire damage. Oh, boy, that really Okay, but I isn't it out? If if you'd uh, if you'd have done your landing on the tail, it had to crunch everything and from your, you from down. the back of your seats clear onto the tail before it got to you, and your back would be supported against the seat all the way through the stress. And so then that would have been the ideal, yes. But it wasn't so. You moved on forward with the nose coming down, and finally it slapped and it was shoving forward. Five feet, it dug five feet in the ground. That's the way we were. That means that there was very little forward motion, though, dude. Don't you realize that? That's close to an ideal well, uh, that, stall landing. That, uh, very close. That's what Bill says. That ranger that went up there and we looked it over great. said that if he had, uh, that he told about the mar marvelous way that the landed that plane. He said if he'd gone just so much further, he'd gone over the edge or something. See, there was cliffs there. You and I were. You and I hunted there. There was rock cliffs and stuff. Oh, yes, I remember those. D didn't indicate any any cliffs or anything like that. Well, this is not where they stalled in. Not where they stalled in, but I mean all around the place. If they'd have gone So many things could have happened. Yeah. But also... Now, but, as I reasoned it out, it seemed to me like it was extremely close to an absolute perfect stall landing, and D, D for some reason, didn't didn't think so, but I, I did. Now, here it says, and I think D done a tremendous job of yes. stalling the plane in. It, where, saved, where the it saved some of our lives. I recall reading the newspaper, but I don't know what else you got down here, but there's... 
there's some that you've missed here. Oh. Oh, okay. All right. But I remember, I was the first one to come, too. You got that down here? Yeah. Oh, sure, yeah. yeah. Listen, listen. Bill, let's don't, let's don't waste there. our time duplicating, because we've got that record. We've got that. Okay. I want the I want the things that's going to just trouble the dickens out of a reader. And I know that a reader is going to be darn confused as to why you guys didn't abort the flight early. Because when, they, why would they you got into fly, it all the Why would you fly, well, when you're out there over the lake? Out over the country ranch, let's say, and you looking ahead, didn't you see trouble? Didn't you see fog? Or, 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 or was it was it uh, 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 chewing at you, and icing no. you up before no, you saw we, the fog? No, we uh, we thought we were up above it all. We thought we did were you up see above fog it. below you? And uh, did and you see yeah, fog below you? There was fog, clouds below. In us. your mind, can you specifically well, remember seeing? Right against those mountains, yeah. Down yeah, against the fly. mountains. Uh -huh. And you were up flying over it. But then their wings sized up and they got heavy and went down into it. Well, but you do remember touching uh, touching uh, clouds and fog uh, a little bit. Once, uh, the it was still raining, remember? Oh, that's a new thing. So it was still we raining. Were, we got around the mountains. Okay. Got around the mountains, the moisture collected on the wings. Now, let me tell you a new thing. Another thing that enters in the picture. I was taught in the Navy that the higher you go, the colder it gets. If there's moisture, if, if you're going through moisture and go on up, it will turn you to ice, turn to ice. Right. All right, you were flying around 10, and it was raining, you're saying? 10,000 feet. Now, you take, still spring. you take the hand and swish it through the air, or you swish anything through the air, fast enough, what it creates is colder than what's out around it. Right. Therefore, a plane moving through... You're saying it's raining. Moving through it, moving through it fast enough, it seems to me that it decreases the temperature and it would turn to ice rather than rain. Especially you up around 10,000 or more elevation. It wasn't raining real heavy. It was kind of a... The way I'm seeing it now is kind of that a mist rain. it, it, it had to have sneaked up on well, you. Well, it was snow when you got up there. Yeah. When, yeah. when, when, yeah. yeah. when you come to, it was snow. When I come to, I had that much snow on my lap. Yeah, it was snow higher up. About that much. I was yeah. out. So I must have been out for a good hour because I had that much snow right on my lap coming right through the windshield. Yeah. And uh, um, I was the first one to come too. I hope I can put this together all right because it, what troubles me is the differences in reports. Yeah. You've got to remember. When, when you're talking, or when Jay's talking, or you, I can disregard an awful lot of it. Yeah. Because it's, it's at least third hand. Yeah, but, except, but with Bill, Bill, except Bill with that. we might remember what they said. Yes. you got to remember, and, and though, value in this that. has been 27 because years. Because I have I've already 27 heard. 27 years? Yes, it is. I have already heard. Byron's 27, reported. and he yeah. was born that year. I still remember. Byron like was, was born that year, though. and it was 27 I years. That, just like it was so a lot can be lost, and, and, and we made a mistake before. not putting all these things down. But some of the details, such as clouds and and uh, passes and so forth. Those things you just don't think of when you're flying it. You don't. Well, he didn't because uh, he wasn't see, trained for I, that. You don't they think might of have, but I do know that, <clears throat> that fog and clouds was down on the mountains. I know it was down there. Yeah. But, uh, but, but you're you know, in while you're flying, you don't. While you're flying, he you brought out another those. point uh, that was uh, was interesting and factual. <clears throat> well, that is that that little plane, which was limited in the first place, yeah was loaded to capacity in yeah. fuel, in passengers, yeah. and... Uh, Everything. Uh, and that was kind of a free And um, so too. he did not have the freedom. He didn't have the, uh, the freedom to go ahead and gain elevation. Uh, altitude, what, uh, what he needed. Yeah. Listen, we need to cover and get into other areas that you feel where the record is wrong. Uh, Jay? Jay? D attacks two things. One that mom was scalped back underneath. Her head, no, her head was pushed back to the Allow left. me to yeah. talk. Mm -hmm. allow, allow me to talk first. He attacks those two things. He, he says she was not scalped. He says she had no, no blood, no evidence on her. She wasn't stitched up. She was normal. Uh, she wasn't bandaged up. And if she had been scalped, she had been bandaged up. The other thing he t attacks is the fact that her rib cage was caved in. He says that that isn't reasonable either. He says he says she participated in in eating. All right, where's the evidence that there was three ribs broken? All right, let me. I've got it down here to a degree. Okay.
Okay, remember, I got... Wait a minute, that isn't evidence, because that's that's his and your statements. I'm first person. First person. I was there. Oh, but, but he also is, a, is first person. No, he wasn't there. He went to Salt Lake. He went, to, he went, he went and took out, he went after help. I was up in the plane with Mom. Some things, yeah. some but, didn't, happened up there. but didn't he look Mom and, and all of you over before he left? Oh, yeah. Because he well, says Mom, was, Mom he helped. was very strong and not, not wanting Dee to leave. Oh, no, Mom kept passing out. She kept passing out all day. And then I'd reach back and she I'd did. Hit her. I'd, hit her, I'd hit her with a map to and wake her up. And she would do the same thing with them. She'd rub his legs. She had him try to she, get back. I tried to get back to her. Why did Mom scream? Was it was it all right. crushed ribs or was it the, yeah. the, the uh, ankle when she leaned forward? No, and it was the ribs. Up. And they kept her pretty. One, one, was punctured, one was punctured through her lungs. One of the ribs was punctured through her lungs. The broken ribs. Well, where do you get that word? That evidence? Well, I'm sure it was that yeah. in the hospital. Well, well, I mean, and as for her being scalped, it was well, more on one side, but yeah. it took come right down to her elbow, and it just it pushed just her right down back. to her elbow. I mean, not our, her eyebrow. eyebrow. That's right. It and was on one side. On one and side, and, and, it just did. Pushed back. and then they just put it back and stitched it like that. Mm -hmm. I was up in the plane with her, and I knew she was bad when I looked back at her head, because it was pushed her hair right back. Yeah. Well, yeah. You saw that? And Dee didn't think so. I no, no, no. He he attacks that. Another thing he, uh, he attacks is uh, is the, the the beads that you talked about embedded in her flesh and her back. Yeah, I I took those beads when they. What size after, were they? Pearls. Oh, well, uh, big white no, pearls. No, they weren't. Size of the end of your little finger. Yeah, they were about. Or, like or that. a bigger finger. They were bigger. She finger crushed finger. her leg. Size the, size ankle, the end of your like first that. finger. She, she crushed her ankle and what kind of beads? This, were this, this is not pearls. White glass. I don't believe they were pearls. They were. Just she was she was pushed kind of back and then, then when I, kind of kind of clear. No, not clear. Milky. Yeah, just white. Oh, more of a solid white. Yeah. Okay. But, but when I was, um, when I felt that my leg was freezing, whereas all the time it was just paralyzed. Yeah, but you could have any feeling. Rub it and so I leaned it back there, which was this one here, and this is one that's still giving me problems. I leaned it back over the seat. She raised forward, and just enough to grab my shoe and pull it off. And she let out a yell. Scream. Scream. Let out a yell when she bent she forward out. and she passed I, out. I, I've got all of that. And then That's I injury. knew that she was hurt. Yeah. And I knew that it, well, it, it wasn't her leg. It wasn't her ankle, no. In fact, right she never complained of her ankle, even in the hospital. Mm -hmm. It yeah. wasn't her ankle. And yet what, the what do you say? I didn't even know it was her ankle until they pulled her out of the plane up there on the mountain. And later on, the same blanket that I was, and her foot was, and her, her foot was at an angle. And I said, "D, look, look at mom's look foot." At mom's yeah. foot. Uh, here is my my problem. <coughs> There's differences in reports, <laughs> and the the, the, uh, the, the doctor's report, if I could ever get to it, is in Tremont, and uh, uh, I'm right now. I'm here, but I live in California, <coughs> and I need I need all of these we could get that corrected. Like I originally requested from every single person, and then them mail back to me, so that I can go through them one time and put everything together, and, and then uh, perfect it on the on the on the uh, uh, computer, and then get a copy of it and start cutting it into pieces and cover it all over my living room floor if that's what's necessary, and put it in the in the routine that it's supposed to be to make it. That has to be prior. To making it into a story, yeah. because after you've got it in the sequence that it ought to be, and all of the the the, the duplication weeded out, then you have to get uh, narration and, and motivation and everything there that changes it from a bunch of facts into a story. You see the the the, the massiveness of my task, and I, I can't I can't get what I need from the members of the family. Well. well I'm afraid Dee has forgotten some of them. All you need, no, all you need to know, all you need to know is the medical report, then, don't you? Yes. Yeah. I asked mm -hmm. Dee if he'd get it, and he, he said, he said yes, he would. Well, we go I through three months long. We just we went, 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 went through three months twice. Well, we know that. We just, we just, in fact, we, well, see, the message that I need to get uh, out, and I thought I had, to the members of the family, is do every single thing that you can that will nail down the story and get it to me. Well, we realize that. Yeah. Well, we, um, we haven't done that.
Jay, you'll have to understand, too, that when you read the doctor's <coughs> report, you know, you've got to put yourself back in 1957, the way they did things in 57, not the way they do things now. It's different in the hospitals now than it was then. You know, when I think about how they brought them in, and I've been with Bill in the hospitals now when they brought uh, trauma cases in like that, mm -hmm. they do things so different now than they did then. I mean, golly, they put you in bed. And, yeah, but what, and, what does that do know? for our story? That doesn't, well, that doesn't what I'm saying is needs, that, that uh, maybe some of the things that you're wanting to find on that report won't be there, so don't, don't be totally disappointed. Well, the doctor should have a report on, on how, what injuries mom had. Oh, yeah. He should have a report. That, that would settle all of that. He may not and, have uh, picked up the well, beach. Well, he though. may not have seen He didn't beach. even know they were there. Mom was. When did you see them? When they were picking her as a corpse? Yes. Up? Yes. That's kind of late. Yes. Yeah. Well, she had been propped up there in the very clothes that, I mean, they didn't change her that much. Uh, uh, and, and it was after too. she died when they put, picked her up and put her on that stretch of thing and had that a red cart. velvet thing over her and wheeled her out. I took the beef. Well, how many and was embedded? And they were embedded right in her. Oh, four or five or something. I, it was broken. Right, and you know what Dee says? No. How could they have gotten in the back, huh? You tell me that. Okay, and she he says, down he says, with the movement forward, obviously forward. Uh -huh. I don't know. Well, but I, but the I mean, they went forward. Maybe those beats went back. You and you fall. And I don't know. Go back maybe and, she and grabbed, it broke or something. I don't know. But I. Uh -huh. Well, anyway, I, I, I believed your story because you're the one who said you saw them. Well, I was and, right and there. And I got no reason to doubt the story. But D, when she died. D, out of his ability to to reason, said impossible. Yeah. But can you see my task now? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, if I it. go ahead and print, yeah, which I will, mm -hmm. I'll print what I've got to, which seems to me the obvious truth, yeah. as the best that I can, and which even if it's contradictory to these, I've got to print it. Yeah, if it might differ from some of it. Yes. But uh, you've got to uh, understand, too, and I want to See, the doctor me. said that Mom had so many broken bones, that, that there was too marrow, too much marrow of the bones getting into her bloodstream. That, well, that if she didn't not, die from uh, pneumonia... She died with uh, cancer. The marrow of the bones would get. It would wasn't get. the marrow, it was the oil from the marrow of the bones yeah. that, yeah, the, sure. that the specialist told us was going into her bloodstream <coughs> and would act the same as blood clots. Mm -hmm. She would have died the other way around. And they said in your, he says in your fasting and prayer, I you better pray later. that the Lord will either take her or that she'll be able to throw a clear off you, because you, it was uh, insanity, numbness, blindness, whatnot. Who said that? The, the specialist that we called well, in from Salt Lake. Who's the specialist? Can you remember his name? I can't even remember his name, but we no, called him in from Salt Lake. No, it wasn't the doctor there at the hospital. It wasn't the doctor, doctor Ficklin. Ficklin. No. no. It, it was, was the specialist. specialist. And he called all of us into that room and told us and that. He, he says, it isn't your father that's the serious one. It's your mother. And it was because of her crushed ankle. And we, well, we, well, to, we after she died... They bent her ankle, and it was just like gravel in there. You I could see. Hear it. You but could uh, hear now, it. Are, is that the broken bones he was referring to, that's or was it was it that, those no. plus others? Well, that's the one that he, he said. The, the crushed ankle is cause is allowing why was mom's from why the was mom's nose bleeding? Was it from the uh, the in and out of that? Uh, I didn't know her nose was bleeding. No. A little bit. I saw. I saw myself. Well, so a little bit. Right there. I Mrs. thought it was careless. Only when she died. I thought it was careless uh, um, placement of the thing that was in her nose by the attendants. Uh -uh. I saw a little bit of blood. I think in your report you said you you saw some of that, and only you you got upset and and you pushed the nurse away or something like that. Pulled the thing. Yeah, but it wasn't else. in her nose. Right. See, when I, when the doctor asked, when we called him, when we went back <coughs> into the room after we'd fasted and gone over there and ate, we were assigned to go into Mom's room. Daddy and I went in. Mom was propped up against the wall like that, and she was staring. And I walked over and spoke to her and took hold oh. of her arm. Now, I, Ma, uh, Dad was staring. Uh, now, no, this... Mom was. Mom was just oh, okay. staring. Oh, all right. Then, then, then uh, all right. Then she was okay. already on her way. Right. Yeah. And the... I took hold of her arm and it was lifeless. And I reached over and took the other one and she moved it. And Daddy, in the meantime, ran and got President Ficklin. And when he came in, he asked us to leave the room. So we went around into Dad's room. And that's when Dad was pushed up over the top of the... And see, that's another thing that D attacks. In fact, this, this gal, that, this, uh, this professional writer that's, uh, that's critiqued uh, all the way through this, 
She says, how could he if he had a bro broken back? Arch up like you're saying he did. I don't care what they say. All right. I saw him. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, she says right so here. Jay, Vaughn, and Sheila, they were the ones that signed in Dad's room. Vaughn and Sheila were in there, and they were the ones that called us, and Dad had pushed up back over, and his eyes were open, and he was staring back at that wall. I didn't, uh, I got in just too late to see that part. I got there in time yeah. to hear him humming the song. That was later okay. that night. And you, all of you told me the same story at that time of what Dad had the done. The only ones that can tell. Bernie's story later changed a little bit, and these uh, has, has changed. Uh, she says here, uh, how do you account for Bill's and D's opposite of, uh, Perception, uh, perceptions. Per perceptions of her? Uh, now, that's apparently how you, you viewed on page six, how you viewed Mom's condition. Uh, let's see, Mom looked the worst of all. And, and uh, uh, that's, that's, I think that's your words. D had already stated, yes, this is your words, and D had already indicated. Um, she apparently didn't realize that D had seen her much less than what you had. D saw her quite a bit less. Yes, all right. And so I was, I was up with her all day. Now, see, but see, if she, yeah. a professional, is confused at this point, can you see what it's going to do to a, a to reader? Read. Yeah. But we're, let me We're going to have to have things more cut and dried, more singular, more one story, and and uh, explaining as it goes along so that you don't leave leave the the reader just terribly confused. Like there's places in here where there's multitudes of <coughs> names given, also uh, uh, indications of different locations, and the reader doesn't know where they are or who's talking. Okay, let me go back now. The That's only why one I need everybody to do their own individual thing yeah. on it. Uh, uh, there's times when, when you're referring to Daddy, and, you mean and in some places you mean Wendell, in other places it's obvious you mean, you mean Dad. the other Dad. Yeah. Uh, okay. So that becomes confusing. Uh, one thing, though. Vaughn and Sheila were in Mom's and Dad. I mean, Dad's room. Daddy and I were in Mom's room. See, the in, your writing, over in, in, your in, the, in your writing, <laughs> you're going to have to change from that. You cannot refer, say daddy and daddy yeah. because some of us yeah. refer, refer to dad as dad or yeah, daddy. Wendell. And so you, the, you, you've got to take Wendell out okay. and make it Wendell. Okay. Vaughn and, and Sheila I. In, in dad's room, <laughs> Wendell and I in mom's room. And so Preston Ficklin asked us to leave. We left. When I come back, he had ordered the nurses to put new ice on her oxygen. And uh, they brought it in. And I walked up, and Mom, uh, I went around, cleared the back of the room, uh, the bed. Oh, is this what we already have on record? I don't I think it you is. have it right. I don't know. Oh, but no, I, go ahead. But anyway, uh, uh, Mom's nose was not bleeding. The nurse was trying to put that oxygen thing in Mom, and she was fighting. Right. And I saw the blood bubbles in her mouth. In her mouth. In her mouth. The bubbles coming in her mouth. Where were they from then? If it was, it was the pierced lung then, wasn't it? I'm sure. She was dying. That meant, the, and that I, meant blood was, uh, was, uh, was building in her lungs. Well, and sure. her breathing was bringing, uh, bringing sure. some of it there up. There was no blood in her nose that I and remember. Unless, unless she had bit her tongue. No, somewhere. no, it was big bubbles. I'll never forget it. I've never seen right. anything like that right. before. But I've never been up with a person that was dying before either. Mm -hmm. And the nurse was fighting <clears> not <throat> to hold her to put that up in her nose. And I just said, oh, leave her alone. And I pushed it back, and President Ficklin just motioned the nurses to step back. And I just held Mom right there, and she got blood on me right from her mouth. And I held her only just a few minutes. And she was gone. Did you realize what you were doing then by holding her away from the... the, the I knew the she was sport? dying. Yeah. I, when I saw that... Yeah, blood I blood know another thing. There, I, I knew she was dying. Didn't have a chance. No. And I had this one word here. Mm. And that was the mom said to Beth. It's the Beth. My mom said, I am a good girl. Beth said, That yes. wasn't the last word. That's what this says. But that was not the last word. That's what she said when I was talking to her... I think it really didn't do us any good. Except Listen, to I, I just turned the tape over, but, but why don't you go ahead and, for the benefit of this side, before it's forgotten, state uh, how you were dressed for this trip, which, which is strictly ridiculous for what happened. Well, uh, none of us were dressed, with, dressed uh, for winter weather. Did you have a sweater jacket? D and I both had a sport jacket on. D had a sports jacket on. 
so would I. And uh, mom and dad in the back. It's been too long. But she just had that suit on. Had no, kind of suit. Yeah, but but no, but no, no coat. Yeah. With the no coat. Was the black there was a good white. heater in the plane, mm-hmm. so it, it wasn't cold. I see. And uh, and so when the plane crashed and and the snow was blowing in, we weren't ready for that. Okay. There was the one blanket that was wrapped around Mama's legs back in the back when we were flying. And uh, and of course when Dee had left for help. Uh, the wind, the snow started really coming in the plane, and uh, through the and broken, through you know, the broken front sh- windshield. The windshield. Mm-hmm. And so um, that blank was the only thing that we. Was that a steady blocking. thing? That snow coming in, or was that off and on? <laughs> oh, it no. was snowing. Steady, steady. It was snowing. I don't know how. In fact, when I got out of the plane, I was <laughs> conscious long enough. That when I when I got out of the plane. I'll take that back. I passed out and become unconscious when I reached over to turn the knob. What knob? Of of the of the door to get out. To get out. I reached over to turn the knob. Was D awake yet? And yeah. All right. And and then I don't remember anything else right after that. But D said, "All I says, well, the doors are jammed, Bill. We've got to go out of the windshield." Uh, and out that way. He says, I was very obedient. I done what he said. Yeah. I got out of the plane and uh, and worked myself down the wing. He says, um, uh, I went and walked one way and he walked up towards the fence. You walked? Uh-huh. And I walked. And Did you walk around the plane first? About no, half I, a quarter I, way. Yeah, way. kind of. Kind of. And then I was going one way and then, then all at once... Uh, uh, D said he heard me yelling. You had fallen down on, my, the, on the face in the snow. Yeah. Said D, I, well, that's all recorded. I, I know that I have that. D and was going on up to, toward the ridge. Toward uh, the to, ridge where that fence was. Because we, why we were fence. in the plane? Okay, very good. Why we were in the plane before he even moved? <clears throat> I saw the fence. I said, D, there's a fence going over the mountain. That would probably lead us somewhere. Did was it saw? 90 degrees to you or parallel to you? It was. I, I remember it was to the to the left. The plane was uh, like this, and it was like that. No, you you're not telling the record. Any, the, it was like this, and it was like that. And, and as far as the record is concerned, that, that doesn't mean it. Was it diascutus to the direction of your flight? It was, was it ninety degrees, or was it parallel, or was it diascutus? Dias. Yeah, kind of That's dias, a little word. bit. Yeah, no, but we felt that it led back down where we come from. From the looks of things, down the mountain, we could uh, see where it was coming over the mountain. I and see. Down. Okay. Did so he, he, he was going toward that. He was going towards that, and he was going to see if he could see where that went. All right. And um, now, did somebody need to do something?